Alberta, Canada's oil and gas producing province, is the most successful English-speaking region in the international education rankings, significantly outperforming both the UK and America. Education Secretary Michael Gove claims it's because of Alberta's culture of autonomy for heads and choice for parents. But what do Albertans themselves put their success down to? Alberta, like all Canadian provinces, is responsible for its own education system, controlling funding, the curriculum, assessment and accountability. The province is divided into 62 separate school districts, one of the largest of which is Edmonton. Today, Edmonton Public School Board is announcing its annual results. Though there's been a small blip at diploma level, there's a refreshing openness. Now, we saw mixed results in, for the diploma exams. Students demonstrated strong results in the science-based subjects and French language arts, but we acknowledge they did not do as well in math, social studies, or English. What sorts of things do you think need to be done to fix this problem? Uh, thank you very much. We're not sure what we need to be doing. And we're going to build on what we heard the minister talk about. So our, the first part of our plan is to uh, get a focus group of our English 30-1 teachers, bring them in, uh, work through the exam responses with them, find out where it is that we need to be providing additional professional development or different additional resources to support them. So that's the first step of our plan. In Alberta, children are tested in the core subjects, but their core subjects are maths, science, English and social studies, which includes geography and history. And in Edmonton, students are tested in reading and writing every year. Administration of Edmonton Public has information that's coming to them every single year on how students are doing. That, to me, is a very important innovation because what often happens and what I often hear about is that in other jurisdictions where you only have the three, six, and nine being tested, teachers try to avoid three, six, and nine because they feel the pressure. And uh, uh, they don't want to try to be involved in, in, test, in teaching in that area. Well, when you have assessment going on every single year, then that kind of, uh, of uh, pressure, if you like, is being distributed throughout the entire system. Superintendent Schmidt will be taking a look at the results to, to determine how we can help more students achieve the acceptable standard and the standard of excellence on their diploma exams. There's a strong culture of collective responsibility and targeted support for students and teachers. It's bound up with the belief that the underlying causes of educational success and failure have to be explained so the public can understand what's really going on in their schools. And there's accountability at all levels. The longer students are with us in the long term, we see that uh, they actually uh, do better and better year over year. And over Just over three years ago, we had a decline in, in our results, bordering on significant declines. And that was when the Ministry of Education uh, formally requested, provincial the Ministry. Provincial Ministry of Education formally requested some very specific information about what our plans are to address the, that particular drop. Kids are writing now in the school We talked so extensively with, with principals, with teachers about uh, what was going on and people really came together to say, okay, let's take a serious look at this. In 1993, Alberta introduced its own teacher quality standard, a benchmark which sets out the standard which all teachers are expected to maintain and is a vital link in its accountability framework. It wasn't developed by government and passed down. It was developed by the education community. People sat around tables, many tables, and talked about what they thought was important in terms of what qualities a good teacher should possess and be able to demonstrate in their practice. 
That's how we arrived at that teaching quality standard. The policy in terms of how it's used was arrived at in the same way. People sat down and talked about how this would be used in the province. They talked about the fact that a teacher has professional autonomy and responsibility and that should be respected. They talked about the role that the employer would have or the supervisor would have. They talked about the role that government should have. Those agreements were arrived at collegially and collaboratively and then they were unfolded and implemented inside of the province. If an individual cannot demonstrate those competencies, then at that point, um, an application would come to me to say that, or to the Alberta Teachers Association, if, uh, if it's, uh, a, depending on the category of school within which you are in Alberta, uh, a request for that individual then to lose their certificate. And so then that matter would be adjudicated. So I guess the differentiation was just their approach to the task. Yeah. And how, how they chose to represent yeah. it. Alberta's provincial government lays down the curriculum content and teaching standards across the region, but each local district employs its own principals and teachers, and through its superintendent, influences the culture and priorities of its schools. Well, I think Edmonton had done a tremendous job of building confidence in the parents of Edmonton that we were a good school system. We shut down or stopped the creation of charter schools because people didn't feel they needed them. And I think we put a big dent into private education because I'd say the three biggest private schools in this area of the world shut down and asked to join us instead. Yeah, this is Nigel's class. A key moment in Alberta's successful transformation was Angus McBee's promotion to superintendent. And then Tante Rose said, if I had a, uh, sorry, When I became superintendent, I tried to build on the so decentralization the culture, the school choice, um, and alternative program culture. Does it matter that she's Jewish or not? Does it fit with the story? And I tried to lay on Probably the culture of laser-like focus on teaching and learning. And I believe a lot of that exists today. So, period one. Alberta prides itself on the professionalism of its workforce. Teachers are contracted to the district and can request a move or be moved to any school in the district. And in Edmonton, it's a buyer's market. Okay, people, the bells went, you're late, let's go. To get a continuous contract here takes three years. I'm still not continuous. In September, I could be completely out of a job next year. I don't know. So they wait three years for you? What happens is, is you're, you get a temporary contract and then you have to be recommended by the principal for a continuous contract. And 90 degrees. So there's been some teachers that will be on a probationary year for seven years. And in that case, it's just either you haven't been lucky like me or you haven't been in the right place at the right time or I, I still haven't quite figured right. it out yet. Or maybe that's their way of basically... It, it might be their way, until yeah. You're, until you're Good enough at the job. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Totally agree with that. I just didn't want to say it. <laughs> it's like your leg kicking back. Think about reflex is gross. If I, t if I stood here and went like this, how many degrees did I just turn? 360. 360, we all know that, right? Your principal is looking. What else can you bring to the school environment other than just your teaching ability? So right now, I coach volleyball. Like our practice tonight will go till 5.30. It's a quiet, expectation. Not everybody does it, but I tell you the ones that do do it are noticed. Angus McBeath's laser-like focus on teaching and learning is now central to Edmonton's district culture. Principals, deputies and middle managers all receive regular training in how to personally help teachers improve their teaching. Gina's head of department, Kevin Bassoon, on the right, is learning about classroom observation with his line manager, Brad Burns. Right, so we're now about to go into a, a math 10C class. <laughs> Most of you are finished with your percentage. So remember, if you know what each one of these pieces of paper is worth, I want you guys in partners or in your groups to determine if you can use them to reduce these fractions. Can you show an equivalent form of 8 over 10 with the fraction tiles? Did you guys find this pretty easy? This is an easy review for you guys? I'm pretty sure we did this in like grade six. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, now, what are you guys listening to? Huh? Who is it? Uh, Mortal Technique. Who? <laughs> uh, it's a Mortal Technique. 
Okay. I don't know, some rap stuff. The, the rap songs stuff? are really intense. Okay. Now, do you find intense music helps you concentrate or distracts you from well, we're kind distracting? Of, we're kind of done. We're kind of just done. Yeah. I thought it was an interesting way to present fractions. Mm -hmm. Students would have a little bit more fun or engagement with moving things around as opposed to just, mm -hmm. you know, drilling and killing. Yeah. Okay, so can you show with your fraction tiles? I was in 7,000 classrooms as superintendent. I visited classrooms. Uh, I wasn't there to assess each teacher's performance. I was assessing the head's performance. And so I would ask the head questions like, what are we gonna see in this room? When we're gonna walk into this classroom, what are we gonna see in there? So you were testing whether the head knew the teaching staff. Yes. I wanted to know what the head knew. And then after we left the room, I'd say, what did we see in this room? And what didn't we see in this room? And what are you gonna do now to, to work with this teacher? So I was out inspecting the quality of the heads in terms of their work in supporting teaching and learning. So I was in 7,000 rooms. And I did have the data with me, the achievement data for each school and each classroom. And so if I thought the principal was dragging their heels or needed or was, you know, not making the effort I thought the children deserved, um, then I put the heat on them without apology. Um, and um, with the view to I needed to turn up the heat and they needed to get moving. There seemed to be a lot of demonstration of understanding through disengagement. Though it required a lot of prep, at what point do you scrap that and move on because your students are understanding? Mm -hmm. So move it forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As opposed to staying with it because you spent time prepping it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, marrying a lesson, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. So, so again, that, that would be my question for her. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing with this Math 10 combined curriculum is where it used to be streamed in two different, now they're all in one class. Yeah, you're going to have uh, that. And that, that, that differentiation is huge mm -hmm. to bring everybody to that level of understanding that's required. So that's what I really notice in her class is the being in the combined class, how vastly different the students were learning within the same room and some of the challenges to that. Mm -hmm. And that's so... I'd be looking to Alicia for some clear strategies to keep that gap from widening. We wanted to improve achievement for Edmonton. I said for all 82,000 kids. Well, Angus, when are you going to stop pushing us? I said, I'll tell you when. When the parents of kids come to my office and say, we, my kid reads too well, we acquit it. I said, when parents come and demand that their children do poorer in school, I will quit it. But guess what? I said, I haven't had one parent in my room, in my office yet, and they're welcome, telling me to back off. In Alberta, there's no streaming or setting until students are 16. Right. If you compare a two-year-old with a 14-year-old, right, obviously... Elementary and junior high schools all insist on mixed ability teaching, which is why high-quality differentiation is crucial. Mitosis. I have had <coughs> maybe 50 countries come and visit with me to learn about Alberta. When we sit down and we talk, we find that inevitably those particular countries are streaming students at a very young age, grade four, grade five. We're subtracting. Line up the decimal. Line up your decimal, absolutely. Line up your decimal, you guys, adding and subtracting and follow it. That's one of the features that we have found in those countries where their performance surprised them, no, shocked them. Uh, because they didn't expect it to come out as low as it was, that they had streaming at a very young age, and therefore many students were not being challenged to a sufficient degree as they were moving through the system and culminating with grade nine uh, as the PISA year. Some teachers would have wished we'd streamed, uh, particularly teachers um, in what we call junior high schools, which are children, you know, around grade seven, eight, and nine. Some, some teachers would wish we would stream there, and there would be some elementary teachers that wish we would stream. We have resisted the pressure on us to stream. And in high school, we would resist 
uh, any more pressure to, to stream, because I think we stream enough. When Gina couldn't get a teaching job in Edmonton, she taught in England for three years, rising to deputy head of maths at a secondary school in Suffolk. Four, check again. Question number four is way up. I know because it's bigger, because it's bigger. I always went with the smaller numbers. I've got to go to the bigger numbers. Okay, you need to go. Do you know which ones you did then? Yeah. Okay. I didn't do anything after school in England. Yeah. When we got together, it was in order to relax. It was in order to, okay, that's over. Thank goodness that was a really hard lesson. Have a cup of tea or go down to the pub and have a pint. Or, you know, we celebrated Christmas together as a department. You know, we would have the schools and then we would have our department. So if we measure the guy in between here, let's measure that angle. How do you do that? Like, just... Whereas here, when we get together, it is more to work collaboratively. So last night, Alicia and I, after our volleyball practice, sat around for an extra half an hour talking about fractions, which is an odd thing to do, I think. You don't sit around with your friends and talk fractions, whereas in England, we would go and talk about our family or where did you go on the weekend or... And so, and when you say socially, that's exactly what it was. 28. Perfect. Okay, so we know, let's write 28 on the inside. Good. Now, if it was 360 all the way around, but I didn't want this section, what would I do with it? Cut it out. Yes, exactly. You would cut it out. Now, what do you mean by cutting it out? Oh, oh would I take away, like, 28 from 360? Perfect. In England, it was not a ton of... Well, how are you going to teach this lesson? We did that in department meetings, absolutely, but it's not something that I would text message my department head and say, hey, do you, what do you think about this? Whereas I would do that to Kevin now. I would do that. Calculator for instance, like no. Communication, constant communication. I will be sitting in my room while my students are writing an exam, emailing to Kevin in the next door, saying, okay, well, what did you do for this? Not quite 180. If I went all the way around, what would it be? 360. You're so smart. So take 360 and then subtract out. Oh, what do you, you want to have as many people collaborate, tell you, inform you, help you, provide resources, and then you do the same for them. 145, excellent. Once you get bored of it, somebody will take your, your, your place, and you, you know that. Neff rushed into the courtyard. Another key factor is the school curriculum. The same body is responsible for the curriculum, exams and textbook procurement. Each are interlinked and yet again, collaboration with teachers is central to all three processes. We have a really strong curriculum that is research-based and has input from teachers. The second thing is that we have resources that are built to support the teaching and learning around those outcomes. The one with four on each side had 16 tiles. We have provincial exams that align with that same curriculum. They're not written about outcomes that come from anywhere else or that somebody thought was a neat question. They're blueprinted right back to that curriculum and they're making people accountable. Those results mean a lot. They're in the public domain. Parents know how schools are doing. They're, they make us accountable. Downstairs in the principal's office, they may not like to tell you this, and I might get in trouble for telling you this as well, but they're looking at my results. They're looking at my results after my first unit exam, after a midterm, all the way up until they have to write their final exam or their diploma course, and then they're looking at it after. How many A's did I have? How many B's did I have? How many people succeeded? And so on and so forth. Where, and that goes per semester, two or three times, and I don't know what it is. It depends if you're in the limelight or not. But it's something that we are all accountable to, for. Okay, why is this person failing? What can you do to make sure that this person is not failing anymore? And a failing here is a 50%. It is a really tight system, and all the cogs work together. It's all really tightly connected. And if you take one of those out, it's not going to function as well. So how could Alberta's success story be transferred to the UK? Angus McBeath is typically blunt. The government should start teaching all parents in Britain to expect their children to be well served. They should look at their working class results and say those aren't good enough and admit it. You know, you have to have urgency. You have to have a brutal honesty around how badly you're doing. I know governments don't like to tell people how bad it is. 
So I think the only way you can change Britain is to start embarrassing people with the ugly truth. And the ugly truth is the poorest are getting screwed. And guess what? The taxes are raised for all children, not just the rich. The taxes are raised for all kids, not just the middle class. 